and welcome to Crafters TV. I'm Ionica Adriana and you are joining us on the masterclass today. So whether you're new or you're a seasoned viewer, welcome. If it's the morning, good morning. If it's the afternoon, good afternoon. If it's evening, good evening. Um, we're going to be talking all things stencils, stamps, dyes and there's going to be so much on the show that we're going to be using today. Um, we have got the Christmas... Christmas? We've got the craft countdown. It's because we're going to be talking Christmas later. We've got the craft countdown, so you need to keep your eyeballs peeled. At any point in any of the shows, a clock can come up, and you've only got half an hour to get the deals. So once they're gone, they are gone, so you've got to get the bargains as quick as you can. Um, watch it live, and then, honestly... They go super, super fast, so don't, don't miss out. Um, also, I'm not on my own today. I've got the lovely Jan in the studio with me. Say hi, Jan. Hi. It's good to be back again, honestly. I'm a busy girl today. Uh, we both are, aren't we? We so, are. Uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. It's a chance to get, get inky and messy. So uh, based around stencils, I've tried to think of some more ways that we can use them because I know we've done one or two uh, shows with them on. But just to give you a little idea, we've put a range of different stencils and embossing folders on. So some of them are Christmas. So we've got Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without a satire there, would it? So this one's the 3D folders with the stencils that overlay to create that gorgeous detail. Detail. So we've got some of those coming up later. We've also got just the 3D folders on their own and I've got a demo using this particular one later on using some craft card and the gilding wax. Uh, with those vintage scrolls there. We've also got, we, I launched these fairly recently, those lovely little Christmas stencils whereby you get the background stencil and then the foreground image. We're going to be starting off with this one using the Christmas tree in a little while. We've put a lovely little bundle together for you with some of the um, best of British uh, embossing folders in and the, the ability to make the little postcard is, is beautiful so again got demos with all these lined up for you uh, throughout the course of the show and then we've got a nice little bundle that have got those little dinky uh, two and three quarter by five and three quarter inch um, embossing folders in there so they fit through the mini which is great if you're crafting with the kiddies and things like that and then if you were watching us earlier we actually did a demo with the everyday stencils and I mentioned that that Rick Rack one in the background there reminded me of the ocean now maybe that's because I'd been looking through the samples earlier and when we looked at this one uh, I just thought that is really really clever use of the stencil there in the background so they were launched with the word dies but we've just literally got the stencils on there and this morning I showed you how to make a background with one of the other ones there so yeah lots coming up some cosmic shimmer as well some mixed media thrown in there I'm going to try and show you as many different techniques again as we can today with those also, I did forget to tell you, just if you would like, if you're obviously watching us on social media or YouTube, please, please comment away whether you've got any questions, whether you are really new to this. I'm very new to this, so I'll be asking questions along with you, and you can tell me a few of the little secrets in here as well. And I'll be reading the comments out. If you've got any birthday shout-outs, please send them in. Um, we've got people watching from South Carolina. Um, we've got California, Ohio. I mean, we are just... We are global here at Crafters TV. So we're going to show you the first Christmas collection here. We've got the stencils here. And we've got, you are getting two for free in this, in this bundle. I'm going to show you some of these cards here. There we go. So this one is the baubles and stars. And this obviously is open to interpretation of whatever colour you would like to do. Whether you want to go for the frosty colours or the warmer colours. It is totally up to you. Right, next we have the bells and ringing. I mean, that just says festivity, doesn't it, in, in a nutshell. And again, you can go with any of the colours that you like. And I really love this kind of, oh, on this side, <laughs> I love this kind of like blending in as well that you can do. You can have the strong colours where it really pops, or you can kind of fade it and have the ombre effects as well. And now we've got the lovely little holly leaves that just say Christmas all over doesn't it it's the holly sprigs here and we've got the little ones here and then you could do it light or as dark as you'd like on that one also in any of these you can use these individually here we've got the oh christmas tree oh christmas tree i just can't do that without not <laughs> without singing it because it's just one of those christmas lines isn't it then we have the perfect poncettias I mean, look at that. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? And then our final one, we have the Splendid Snowflake. I mean, just gorgeous there. 
So, Jan, we, we're going we're gonna to start it off with you, aren't we? We're we are. Excited. We're going to start off with those, with the first demo. What I like about these, Ionica, is even though we launched them as a Christmas package, uh, the, some of the designs in there are quite generic in there so for example the one with the um, the little flowers behind the poinsettia could be used at any time of year I think the poinsettia done in different colours could just be a flower uh, I'm actually going to use the old Christmas tree one to get us started and I'm going to keep it fairly basic I'm just going to slide in a little bit of cosmic shimmer right at the end just to add some uh, some sparkle so I'll talk you through it as we go along so what we get in here then is a five by five stencil which is nice and snug in my packet for some reason there we go just got stuck inside so let me just grab um, that piece of paper there so we get a five by seven inch stencil which is intended to be the background but again everything's open to interpretation you can see all that decoration we're going to do that one and I'm actually going to use it as a background as as this concept was designed just to get us started and then you get a gorgeous little four by four inch stencil which is like the main feature so this could be the topper and that's what we're going to make with that one today so as I say I've kept it fairly simple to get started and then we're going to throw some different techniques in as we go along so stamping card for this one then um, again you can work on any of your card stocks it doesn't have to be when I'm using ink I like a nice smooth surface so the stamping cards 300 GSM it's a good weight to work on but you'll notice that it's not the same size as the stencil I'm not too worried about that I just want this size piece for my card project so yeah I'm just going to pick out an area of the stencil that I want to work with and then like I did if you were watching us earlier on this morning when we demoed the stencils I do like to stick them down uh, rather than just hanging on to them so that they don't move and again I'm just going to pop a little bit along the top then I'm just using the low tack tape to anchor it in place there also what that does is provide you with the facility to lift this up and check your work and knowing it's going to go back down in exactly the same place so working on the background first we're actually going to work with some of the uh, Spectrum Noir Harmony inks now I nearly always bring my pigment inks uh, as a lot of you that know me know that I love my inks and stamping and these are the ones that I have out in front of me on my desk when I'm working at home so I thought for a change because I'm always using them we'll actually bring the water reactive ones today and work with those because they all do the same job they all apply color and the color families are the same they've just got different sort of properties so the water reactive is great for blending it's great for splashing your water techniques on and bleaching out whereas the opaque ones if you're watching earlier we actually use this through the stencil and then added clear embossing powder to the top of it so it stays wetter for a bit longer than these so we're going to start off then with the pink tulip which is the lightest one in the pink range load up our sponge applicator and we've got all these different items that we're using on the show for you there's a range of inks on the website things like the applicators and that we normally pop on the show so that you need to stock up on them and then just gentle now this one has got you can see where we've got these long areas that are meant I think they're meant to look like you know sort of the tinsel or string with the baubles hanging from them so just be mindful of that I would normally say to you go in little circular motions but try not to snag the scent stencils they are quite durable but obviously you want them to last so I'm just tipping my sponge applicator onto its edge and pushing the edge of the sponge into those sort of lines just to get that ink in there it doesn't need a lot of pressure but literally just to pop that ink into the space there and then the little baubles I can go over the top and just push that ink in there so you can see how that's doing the job just the same all right so we're going to go all the way over and I think if I remember rightly this is just a little five by five inch square that I'm going to use as a background layer on my design when we pop it all together so just working my way down there just as I say be mindful of your stencils they are good quality mylar that we make the stencils from but they're only a thin one so as I said you can see this moving when I actually put the the ink in it so don't snag it and damage it 
You so could again, also, I suppose, if you were doing two different colours, you could actually maybe just put a bit of low tack tape across that section just so you didn't, and then you could do two different colours, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. You can, what we call masking things out, yeah. Uh, we could do that. We could actually, and I do that, I tend to do that with my stencil tape if there's areas that I want to uh -huh. cover up. Um, and you're quite right. Like the one we did this morning, we did the ombre effect on. So then I'm just going to flip it round because we're getting closer to the bottom. And I'm just going to bring the cloth to lay over here in an attempt to keep my fingers clean these kind of shows I usually end up covered in ink by the end of them so uh, sometimes it's near on impossible not to get it all over you hard, hard um, days work there Jan <laughs> so just to finish that bit off there and as I say just tipping that sponge applicator at an angle so that I'm getting the edge of it into those lines where the, uh, the, the uh, whether it's string or tinsel or it's meant to look like the uh, the tree decorations there in the background so once we've got to the bottom of there I'm just going to leave this one as is with the pink and how, so how long does that take to dry once you've taken pretty it Pretty much instantly. Okay. If you're using the quick dry inks out of our range, they literally do what they say on the tin. And you've seen us demo it, pick it up and rub our fingers over it, yeah. it's dry instantly. <laughs> These probably take a little bit longer, but I wouldn't say they're wet. The water reactive ones will dry quite quickly. Okay, uh, okay. So I'm not too worried about that. The opaque pigments stay wet for a little bit longer. They're designed that way so that it will attract that embossing powder and stick to it. So that one does take a wee bit longer, but not a massive amount of time. I would say minutes rather than, than longer. Days. So when we lift that up now, you can see we've got that design underneath ah, there. Pretty. So I'm happy with that one. And that's going to be our background. So we'll take that one off here. Cleaning your stencils, pretty straightforward. Because the inks are water-based, I tend to use my cloth. I tend to pop um, a little bit of water, which I've always got water in my spritzer. Just spritz it over and then literally with a wipe or a piece of paper towel you can actually do this you've seen me do it onto a piece of scrap paper to create a faint like a ghost background however you want to do it and then just pat it and it's good to go back in your packet if you've used media products on them i would definitely recommend cleaning them straight away because once those media products set uh, they can sometimes be difficult to get off your stencil so the little tree, we're going to go a bit more contemporary. Uh, the last time I demoed this, I did it traditional with green. But we're actually going to go more for a turquoise today and go turquoise and pink for a, a contemporary Lovely. design. So again, I've gone back to the opaque one, no particular reason, just because that's what I picked up. And I've got the Oasis, which is the lightest one from the um, turquoise range that we do. So just to load up that applicator. So the first layer on here... I'm literally going to pop down with ink. Okay, so we're just, just the same. Nice open spaces on this one, so you can get that applicator in there and just work it round. I'm still using the stamping card with that nice smooth surface. So again, just be mindful of where those little areas that are, uh, because this is only very thin here, you don't want to damage that stencil there. So I'm just literally working in the direction of the stencil. And, and you, then, you seem to get an even coverage. Like I, I've not ever used a stamp before, but you, it doesn't look like you're getting lines in it. It's, not at all, nice no. There was a lot of work went into these. These are our own Spectrum Noir, are our own range of ink pads. And our development team that's headed up by our Leanne has worked tirelessly to get these to a level where they will literally do what we want. And, you know, I mean, it's literally taken minutes to actually yeah. pop that in. And when I lift that up, you can see we've got Ooh. that lovely little design there. Now, I'm going to keep it square but there's no reason why you couldn't fussy cut through there as well and then I'm just going to bring in one of our cosmic shimmer products now we've had these on several shows now and there's a complete range of different colors so if you want to check the website um, I don't think this one's actually on the show this one's ice blue this is one of the ones I had at home but this is called glitter kiss so Ooh. it's actually a polish with glitter encapsulated into it. So when I open this up, it's just absolutely lush. Just have a little oh, look wow. in there. 
So the glitter's actually encapsulated inside it. Now you can actually create your own glitter card with this by covering a whole piece of card. It would need two or three coats. So first coat, let it dry, and then the second coat. So for example, if you went one way with the first coat, then I would come this way with the second coat and maybe a third one, you'll get a lovely coverage. But I'm actually gonna put it through our stencil over the ink. So this particular colour is not in stock, but we will be getting them back in, but there is a whole range of colours. I just picked one that went with our uh, design that I'd got here. We've got some new colours in that I don't think you guys have seen before, and we've got some stock of some of the older ones. So if you haven't seen them before, the bit that I like about these is if we just click the lid here, these come with their own applicator, and it oh, all fits clever. together and seals within the so you don't have to worry about what you're going to apply it with it's literally there ready so it does dry when it's in there so what i tend to do is just a little tiny bit of water and just sort of prime that ready they are water-based products so it's not going to hurt and then i'm going to take the excess off on the cloth i don't want it to be wet I just want it to be spongy, for want of a better word. Okay. Someone's, um, Betsy on Facebook has just said, I see Jan's famous cloth. Is this, me, me and Jan have not worked together. Is this, Do you is, know, is this a whenever famous I thing? get in the studio, <laughs> my throat gets so dry that I, do, I nearly always end up having to cough and I hate no, it. No, cloth. Cloth. The cloth. I thought you said cough. No, oh, you won't cough. Cloth. No, you're famous. Famous oh, cloth. My rag, my dirty rag. They, they <laughs> laugh at my dirty rag. It was the weirdest thing in my craft bag. Yeah, oh. it used to. It used to be a pillowcase in a former life. <laughs> But it's loved. What it, can I say? Do you know what? It looks very artistic. You know, one of the paint boards when you see people yeah, paint it. it does I mean, the job. That? It does the job. Don't it's worry, used Jan. for mopping up. It's used <laughs> for cleaning stencils. It's used for holding whatever. It's just there, ready. So back to this one then. <laughs> I'm gonna. I thought you said the cough. I always no. end up coughing when I come on air as well. So I'll get you here some we water. go. <laughs> Applicator to the product, and it's almost like a, a moussey texture. And I'm just going to dip it in and drag the sponge over the edge of the jar there so you want a minimal amount on here but you want to load up can you see how i've got the oh yeah the i don't want that much on it i just want to cover in so that it's nice and flat on here and then i'm going to turn this so that i'm working away from myself because i'm right-handed i find it easier to work this way and i'm literally just going to dab it and push it into the stencil there so again take a little bit and just push it in over the top and the reason i put the coloring on there to start with is so that it had got a base of the same color and it's really to save a little bit of this product it means i don't have to use as much of my glitter kiss to actually get the glitter it's a little cheat isn't it really it is yeah and it's like when you've got really nice products like this it's like you don't want to just waste them so by putting the ink underneath it's given me the chance to have that base colour to work on and then I pick that's why I picked the turquoise ink so that it was a similar colour to the uh, the product here that I'm using and I'm just sort of layering this up staying within the parameters of that stencil and you're going to get that most gorgeous glittery Christmas tree now off the rest of the stencil I'm going to take any excess because again I don't want to waste it and that can go back in here little bit of housekeeping just to make sure that this stays clear so that it doesn't stick together and then reseal it and then this one just clicks back into the top there so once we've got this ready now if we have a little look inside you can see we've got that most gorgeous Ooh. glittery and if i just lift this you can look oh, at the sheen so pretty and the shimmer on there now it takes probably about five ten minutes for that one to dry now you can heat it with a heat tool but it does sometimes bubble and blister which gives you a whole different look so it, it's you know it, it might be what you're aiming for but for this one i want it to stay nice and flat so i'm literally going to leave that one to dry and as always we've got one i've just got a question bit. um just about the glitter um, Angela says, Jan, if you don't have the glitter kiss, could you mix extra fine glitter with the plain poli with a plain polish? Yes, I don't see why not. Absolutely. 
yeah, give it a go. I'm all for trying these things and see what works and what doesn't, but I don't see why not at all. As long as it was nice, fine glitter, yeah. I think that would mix into a, a polish by no means, yeah. I, I, I'd be interested to see, have a go and see if it works yeah, and let me know. Yeah, send us a picture. Yep. Yeah. So that is exactly what I've done. And then I've just added some oh. little pearl trim on there to make it look as if it's got baubles on the tree. And then I've matted it on a piece of ordinary glitter card, which matched the, uh, the colouring. So you can see we've got that background and we've got a foreground there, which are going together beautifully. So again, I'm going to use the one that I'd actually prepared at home. And all I've done extra to this one. And you can actually, that's quite a good example there. This is the pigment ink. And this is the water reactive ink. So there's a slight difference. Although it's the same colour family, I find that the pigment inks are a little bit more pastel in tone. That's maybe why I like them so much, because I do like the pastel colours. Uh, whereas this one's got a bit more definite colour in it, I think. And the only thing that I've added to it is literally to go around the edge and just highlight those edges. And I've not even gone back into the ink. I'm just using what's left on that applicator. I love this technique. It kind of gives it more of a depth of field almost, doesn't it? It does. It sort of draws your eye into that sort of centre. And I just think it finishes it off nicely. I'm a big lover of inks. <laughs> and I, I do love them for lots of different, not just for stencils, but stamping. Yeah. I love creating my own background. So to start off with a piece of white card and then turn it into something different. But you can see there where we've got to. This could easily have been the piece yeah. on top of there. All right, and then I've matted and layered it on some pink and then on that same glitter card that we've got going on here. And we're just going to layer them up. So I've got a um, five and three quarter, oh, a six inch square card. Have I got the whole hog here? So that must be, yeah, it's joined in the middle because our A4 is not quite big enough to make a six inch. So I've done two pieces, joined it in the middle and then I've added a little stepper piece so you can see we've got that sort of stepper design there look with the m yeah so we're going to put the background in here so we're going to use our tape pen for that one and just pop some double-sided adhesive to stick that one the I love this little mouse thing I, I think it looks like a little mouse i think you should put little eyeballs on it <laughs> it's so sweet I love it. Is. <laughs> yeah I think you should it's got a little character to it so I'm just going to make sure that those little bows are the right way up on there and I've not got my uh, my baubles going up in the air all right there's nothing worse <laughs> no one needs baubles, baubles going, going up, up in, in the, the air, air. <laughs> so let's just pop that one on the back there keep that one nice and flat and then what I thought we'd do is pop this one on the front here so that we're going to get a little bit of distance between them so I just want to put glue then I'm going to go from about there to there so we want to be at that angle like that and just put glue in that bottom section there and put plenty on there because it's going to stick onto the front of that fold and I'm going to put that at an angle on one side like so give that a good press down and then I've stamped out a little sentiment that says celebrate the season. Now the stencils don't come with a sentiment. These are just a stencil set, but there are lots of our recent products that we've really released that do have sentiments in there. So that one's gonna go on the top there like so. And then I've got a little tiny ribbon, which I've got my glue gun on underneath here, just to pop a bit of hot glue and we'll have that one at the side there I think so you can see how they were designed to actually have one of the stenciled items in the background and one as the foreground so when we turn that one round now you can see we've got that M design going on there all right a bit of a contemporary look there rather than the traditional red gold and green Gorgeous. So that was Christmas, and that was Oh Christmas Tree, that one. Oh Christmas Tree, oh... I need to stop singing <laughs> Christmas songs. It's bad luck, isn't it, apparently, if you sing it. Not at Christmas. <gasps> I mean, they probably are playing songs, aren't they, in the shops? So we're just going to have a little recap. I'm going to show you what is in this collection. So you are getting two in there for free. So the first one that we've got here is the baubles and stars. And again, as you've seen the techniques that Jan's been doing, if you, you want to do the kind of like ombre effects or you want to fade it in or if you want a stronger colour. I mean, even the bauble there has it slightly lighter in the middle and it's making it look more spherical. 
thought I was going to mess that word up. It's spherical. Got it right. Here we have the bells are, bells are ringing. Again, very seasonal, that one. And we've got the holly sprigs. I love this one. I mean, it's just Christmas tree in a nutshell, isn't it, when you've got the holly leaves. Here's the one that Jan used just now. And as you can see, the, the backing of the tree has... Uh, it's almost like white in the background giving it like a kind of like a tunnel effect so you can do you can just go for your life with the creativity you just i mean there's no ends to the options that you can do here right we've got the perfect poncettias and the last one that we have got is the splendid snowflakes i think this one's my favorite i just love a snowflake just gorgeous okay so next we have got the get it, got it good. Uh, the Gemini Mini is absolutely perfect for beginners. We've got the fluttering by, uh, flutter by the beautiful bloom over the rainbow, garden friends and party time. And I mean, I don't know if you saw the show earlier, but I was wearing a rainbow top and I think rainbows just give joy to the world. Absolute joy. We have got the plates as well, the embossing plates for your mini. These are £7.60 or $11.70. And then for the platinum price, we've got the £6.8 p or $9.36. And we've got the embossing folders to fit in the mini there. So um, as you will see, may have seen earlier the, the manual little mini one that's what they'll go through again 15.96 just going to relay the prices to you and then 15.80 platinum members 12.77 and 12.64 next coming up we have got the best of british they will also fit through the mini six pounds 58 and eight dollars 36 and then the platinum price is five pounds 26 and the dollars are 6.69 so now i am going to show you these gorgeous embossing folders these are the 3d embossing folders here and the first one that i have is the climbing ivy and i just absolutely love the color of this it's just it's almost dragon green this one almost regal gold in that one next coming up we have got the grand butterfly again lovely colors on that one if I tip it, you can see it on the light. Look at that, just gorgeous. I mean, everybody loves a butterfly, don't they? So pretty. We've got the lavendish leopard print. My sister absolutely loves leopard print. She has leopard print handbags, coats, socks, you name it, she's got it. And the last one that we've got is the vintage scroll. And again, just that beautiful, beautiful gold there. So Jan, what have we got coming up next? Are we demoing now? We're going to have a look at those uh, 3D folders this time. Yes. And, and I love these, honestly. There's some really, really nice prints in here. Uh, I've done so many demos with the leopard print one. I just love that one. So <laughs> I thought we'd have a change today. And I've gone for vintage scroll. So again, really, really nice. But just before we get going with the demo, um, a 3D embossing folder, slightly different to what I tend to refer to as the original embossing folders. Um, we started out with... And traditionally, five by seven in size, which is what these are. But a traditional one is much, much thinner than this one. And it brings that embossed level just up all to the same level. So you'll get a pattern pushed up into your card that's all one level, which is where the embossed side of it comes. And then when you flip it over, it's pushed it into the card and you get the debossed side. But with a 3D folder, we've got different layers of embossing. It's almost sculpted inside here. And you'll see what I mean when we do the embossing. But I've got areas in the background that are just slightly raised. And then the these big beautiful scrolls that are the design on here are, are not just raised but are rounded as well so you get that sculpted image on them that give you a really deep emboss so let me show you what I mean by popping it through some uh, some cardstock so I've taken my beloved craft card which I adore working with anybody that knows me knows that I have fine pink and craft card are two of the favorite things and I've taken an aperture out of here and to do that I've just been through my stash and I actually picked out some of the inverted nesting dies and I've taken the oval with the, uh, the lace oval stitch laced oval and literally it cuts this piece out of here so that was my piece of card in its entirety using one of the sets from here 
just move that along a little bit so you can see there. And I've cut this out and I've just wanted the aperture in that top left corner there. OK, so I'm going to come back to these bits because we're going to use these bits um, as part of the design later. So I just thought I'd bring you that one to show you how I've arrived at that. And then this is cut at the right size to fit in here. Now, all the, all the folders are five by seven, but I tend to cut my card just a little bit smaller. So I go with six and three quarters by four and three quarters so that you don't get that edge bit uh, imprinted into your card. And then again, if you're not sure which size, Sides which open it up and have a, a feel you'll find that the detail is quite well raised on one side here and then this side is like pushed in it's recessed so the idea is when your cardstock goes in here it's going to push that design up through the cardstock into the recess side and that's where you get your embossed detail from so we're going to pop that in there line it up with the folder pop that through and then the other thing that I want you to think about when you're embossing these is because the folder is so much thicker we need to compensate that by reducing our plate combination so for a 3d folder I just want you to use one of your glass your clear plates your magnetic shim to build up the right depth the folder with the cardstock in and then instead of your other clear cutting plate I'm going to use the plastic shim as my top layer and I've just put them on the junior plates you can see they fit nicely in there although I've still got my big Gemini out this is my preferred method I've got the big Gemini in my craft room at home and wherever I can use the smaller plates I do use them and then you've got the A4 surface of those larger plates if you want to create something that's a bit bigger now if you want to slightly deeper embossed than that you can try it with your metal shim in here as well just to create I mean the metal shims only a sliver but again it's just going to create it and bring this out even more so but when we take this out now you can have a look at that embossing and I'm going to flip it both ways so that you can see there so this has got those gorgeous sculpted scrolls on it's coming in to have a look again here we go look absolutely beautiful but there are some elements still pushed into the background there and if I just flip that while we've got the camera on you can see there where it's pushed in the other side and again there's no right or wrong we nearly always tend to use the raised emboss side but if you wanted to have this idea on and have that recess that pushed in look there's no reason why you can't use that side as well so to bring this out and just emphasize it a little bit we've got the gilding waxes on the show again and I just love the combination of the the king gold's my favorite gilding wax color anyway but the combination of that on the craft card I just think is a really nice uh, sort of look so again you can see I've still got loads and loads of product left in here these are my original jars of gilding wax and that's I bet it's not even halfway down and this is the favorite so this one's actually been used most how, so, how long would one last if you if you are a regular crafter how well I use these a lot and as I yeah. say these are my original pots which I bought when I was working for the store which is over three years ago now oh wow yeah so they do last a while you use so little yeah so I've taken it out onto my finger I tend to apply it with my finger but if I put this straight down now I'm literally going to get a splodge of a fingerprint so just tap off as if you're trying to get it off your finger tap off the excess so that you've just got a light covering and then just touch where the embossed the raised area is and because you've got such deep embossing on here it's really easy to just catch that embossed area and you don't use much of the product at all but I love the way it looks on the craft card. Now you can use this on any card, so it looks great on the black. You've seen us use it on black cardstock quite a lot. It will even go onto your colours. You know, you don't have to um, to work with it on a dark colour. So again, just all over that area where the embossing is, and I'm just trying to catch the edge of that oval that we've created as well, and just highlight. To give it a bit more it just sort of makes it stand out a little bit more there and just take that all the way around and try not to be too I am quite heavy-handed so sometimes I get a bit giddy <laughs> and I end up with more on than what I'd like but hey ho it's uh, it all goes down to creative license I think there's no right or wrong with crafting you do with what you're comfortable with but yeah, I get a bit giddy and it, it just goes everywhere. And I think, oh, well, 
you know, that's the look for today. But you can see there where we've got to. I'll hold that up again in a second. And then this just cleans off with the, um, the wet baby wipe just to get that off there and get rid of the excess. I love these. They're really raised, aren't they? They're really prominent. There's the 3D no, ones are just, yeah. they're, they're like take embossing, literally. Excuse the pun, they take it to another <laughs> level, don't they? I just realised what I was going to say then. So we've got that piece there. And if I tilt this now, you can just see how it's brought out that detail, that little bit more. And you've yeah. got that bit of a sheen to it as well. And the gilding wax will, will buff up as well. So the good old cloth again comes in for all sorts of things. It's <laughs> not famous cloth. Not a, it's not a wet, wet product, if you get my meaning. Obviously, it needs to be wet to go on here, but it pretty much dries instantly. And because it was designed originally for furniture, if you use a smooth cloth and just buff it a little bit, you'll get a really nice sheen come up on it. So again, just over the top of it. It doesn't damage the card. It doesn't damage your, you know, your embossing. But it just brings up that little bit of extra sort of sheen on it. Yeah. So we've got that far. And literally, I did a little bit of work at home. And what I'd done, I said I was going to come back to these pieces. I've taken the frame and I've literally stuck that back into the aperture now. Now, what you'll find when you start embossing is that it can just stretch your card a tiny bit. And you'll find that maybe this doesn't quite fit back in as well as it did when you cut it. So all I've done is just tacked a little bit of glue around the edge to make sure it sits in there. And you can see I've just got some uh, foam on the, on the back ready just to hold it in place. And then we're going to use this bit. I've actually stamped on this bit here. So again, just had a look through the stash and found a, a stamp that went with it. May all your wishes come true. And we're going to pop this one and raise, that's why I put the foam pad on here, so that this actually creates the sentiment inside, but the whole thing's raised at the front. And we're going to put that onto, um, it's almost like a sideways easel card. So again, I've used the craft card at 10 inches by seven and a quarter, two pieces of it. I've scored it along the top so that we've actually got the means of making this shape. All right, you can see there where we've just created that shape on the front and we're going to put our detail on the front of here. And then I've got an extra piece of card that I've stuck on here to act as a stopper. So just that last little bit, which is an inch and a half on this side, I've put an extra layer of craft card on and I've got a third layer. I've actually just done a little bit more with the embossing that we're going to so that this literally acts so if you imagine your easel cards are stood up and we put the stopper on it's pretty much the same but just sideways so while it's still flat we're going to pop this one on here so what i'm going to use is a bit of kalal all-purpose glue on the sentiment because then i've got a little tiny bit of wiggle room to move it around and get it into the right place for the embossed piece to sit over the top this has a real Disney feel to it. It's got a real magic to it. it looks like the, the, the look, looking yeah, into a mirror, really doesn't like it? Fairy tale yeah. Kind of, yeah, just that kind of magic behind it. So I'm going to pop glue on the back of my little sentiment piece. And then literally, because this takes a second or two to, uh, to go off, I can pop this down where I think it needs to be, roughly. And then I can pop this in the right place here. And then I've got time to just wriggle this. I want it to look as if it's still part of the design where it's been cut out from. So can you see how we've got yeah. it pretty much lined up inside there now? And then that one now will set in the background. And then I've set myself up here. I've now with a gazillion foam <laughs> pads. <laughs> oh, so I have a love-hate relationship with foam pads, Ioni, because sometimes they behave. And sometimes they don't. They're not I, doing too bad. I think I've got it sus now. The ones that I had trouble with, I think I'd had in my drawer for quite a long time. They dried up a bit. And I think they just literally, they were tired. <laughs> I really do. Because more That's recently, exactly what they were. <laughs> I've been using newer ones. And honestly, if you see our Craig with these, Ionica, he's like, tch, 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 gone. I, he's you know like what? a I wizard with I watched a with show them. with him and I, yeah. he... He has like a little tool, I think, that he flicks it up with. He's like, no, but I just would not be good at this. Nail. If yeah. you have acrylic nails, it is, it's game over. You need one of Craig's <laughs> flicky tools. Oh, I've done it again, you silly <laughs> Billy Billy. 
Right. What have you done now, Jan? I've forgotten a bit again. I get oh, giddy. I've Jan. forgotten a bit. We'll manage without it. What did you forget? I was going to put a <laughs> coloured piece as a matte layer behind it. Oh. Now, I'm not sure. Could, I mean... I'm not even going to try and no. get the foam pads off. But, yeah, this was supposed to go behind here uh, but i have got some bits for the side so we'll pop the side pieces on yeah dearie don't me don't worry Do don't know? worry we'll put we're having a lot of love online by the way jan pardon we're having a lot of love online today oh bless stephanie's saying hello ionica you're uh, you're doing a fabulous day fabulous keeping us up to date cindy on facebook love the embossing folders um that does look an amazing on the craft card it does indeed um, Bernie, hi Jan and Ionica, love having you both keeping me company in the sewing room while oh, I'm prepping. That's our Bernie. For... That's our Bernie, yeah. Yeah. She's part oh, of she... our team. <laughs> she says, Ionica, do you like sewing? I've already converted Ben. I don't know if I'm very good at sewing, but I, I would give it a go. I, why not? Why not? Now be careful what you say. <laughs> Just be especially live on air, be careful what you say. Oh no, I've committed to it now, have I? <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm just going to pop that one on. It's just cut slightly smaller than the panel there, just as an extra piece of decoration and to stop this when it, it sits up. And then oh, last bit, we've just got a finished. nice little peach ribbon there, just as extra decoration. There we go. Now my producer's just saying she, she she's wanting to just go around the edge of my embossing yeah, folder. Now that's that would because be good. I forgot to put the uh, the uh, mat and layer. You see, it would have stood out with the mat and layer behind it, but hey yes. ho, it's all uh, all artistic. So you can see how it stands up like so. Let's move these pieces out of the way. Sometimes as well, when you go wrong, you you find a magic thing happens, and you go, oh, I'm going to do yeah. that again, and it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It would have stood off a little bit better. So <laughs> it falls pretty much flat. Obviously, we've just got that raised element at the end with that little bit of uh, foam tape. But then to actually display it, you took it into the back there and it creates like that. Almost like, as I say, like a, like a sideways easel. Yeah. So there we go. So just imagine this. it with the peach. You couldn't see a lot of peach behind it. Lovely. But yeah, that's your five by seven embossing folders then, those 3D folders. I love that. And I think with all of the embossing folders, I'm going to recap on what we've uh, shown already. But just that alone was very fairy tale like So this one, we have got the climbing, the climbing ivy. And it kind of is what it says on the tin. You can see the ivy here. But also, there's a really strong pattern underneath. If I just turn it a little bit, it's just nice, strong lines there. And as Jan was saying, if you, do, if you are confused a little bit, you can feel on the insides where the heavier lines are. So don't worry about it if the logo kind of rubs off if you're using them a lot next we've got the lovely purple butterfly this is the grand butterfly again just look at the beautiful shape it's really strong there on on this part of the i was going to say petal then wing i meant the wing i meant the wing next we have got oh this would be my sister's favorite lavish leopard and yours jan i mean my sister has everything leopard in the world i mean and yeah um, what's the lady from EastEnders? She used to wear it all the time. Was it Kat, Kat Slater? She used to wear leopard print all the time. Yeah, that's the soap in England, if you, if you don't know. And this is a vintage scroll, this one. And that's what she just used on her demonstration just yet. Next, I'm going to show you what Jan was using, just rubbing it onto the card, is the gilding waxes here so i'm just going to show you them one by one i'm going to stack it up a bit like jenga so if you hear a crash that's why so there we go just going to, there we go that's your silver one i'm just going to turn it so you can see it and then we've got oh i told you i dropped them all fingers and thumbs there we go nice king gold there that one Antique gold. I love this one. This is really rich. It's got real warmth about it, this one. Just going to keep turning it so you can see it. Nice bronze feel to it. I feel it can match my nails. I might paint my nails with it. Can you, Jan, can you paint your nails with this? Probably not. <laughs> it's probably giving the wrong tips for this. A bit of a shimmer on mine now. <laughs> there you go. What was this one, sorry? Renaissance gold. Oh, 
just love the names of these. They are absolutely gorgeous. And then we'd have the gold. I mean, just gorgeous. Right, I am going to show you a little video of Club Inspire now. It's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Quiet. Ah, oh, the neighbors. I'm all out of Zoom. I'm so lost without you. I'm not, I'm not singing. I'm not singing. Lisa, if you email in, don't send a picture of your air fryer. Make sure it's something creative. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us. You give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. Joy, there's not a dry eye in the studio here. <laughs> Debbie's welling up. I'm welling up. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV. Create every day. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafter's companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Hello and welcome back. If you've just joined us, you are watching the Masterclass. And if you have been watching all the time, you will have been seeing the demonstrations. And this is why I'm going to show you the embossing folders that we have been using. And these are for the Gemini Mini. And as you can see, we've got lots of different, lots of different patterns that we've got on here. All lots of pretty patterns. <gasps> Oh my goodness, it's the craft countdown! Oh, now I'm in the wrong order of these! Ah! Okay. Okay, craft countdown. The clock is counting down. 30 minutes, that's all you've got. You are lucky people, and I've got all of the gifts under here. I have got this bag here. I'm going to open it if I can. Oh, no, I don't know if I can. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so nervous. I think it is stuck. No, it's not. No, it's there not. It's, just, it's the nerves. It's the nerves. It's the craft countdown. It does it to me. So this is the bag with, and obviously it's got lots of space where you can put different kind of pens in there, pokey tools. We've got the, the dies in here, the little stamps. I mean, we all love a bit of storage. I mean, and I just love that colour. That is gorgeous. Right, next one. <gasps> We've got the metallic ink pads here. Uh, Liquid ink, sorry, there you go. And then you can see the colours. These are the vintage metallics there. Look how gorgeous they are. And as you saw, they're just, I mean, you can tell already they're really pigmented. Just, ooh. We've got the antique bronze, the copper, the bruised copper, and tarnished silver there. Just trying to read that on the screen. Right, okay, next we have got the goodie bag. Here we go. 
Look at this. I mean, that is an organised person's dream, isn't it? You can see exactly inside. This is called the buddy bag, and you don't need to worry if it gets uh, dirty or if you get anything on it, because obviously you can wipe it. And if anything spills in each individual compartment, again, it's not going to spill everywhere. You can. It is a Velcro top. Here we go. There we go. Really easy to open. I'm not going to open it upside down because it'll all fall out. And then we've got the drawers here. I mean, you can put your dies in there. Look, I mean, that really is an organised person's dream, isn't it? Look at that. So brilliant and really easy to stack away. And if you have got a lot of crafting stuff at home, you can put it away and be able to see what you've got in there. Right, next. Oh, I absolutely love these. I love these stamps. These are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I just... I mean, anything looks really impressive, doesn't it, if it's done with a stamp. We've got the, the little flower and... Is it... What bird is that? I don't know. I can't see what... I mean, Kingfisher. There we go, yeah. I knew that was Kingfisher. I mean, these are gorgeous for wedding invites, party invites, christenings, anything. Or if you just want to send, I don't know, a little love letter. How cute would that be? You never know. And then we've got the Bloom with Grace here. The, the topper pad. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to flick through this one. There we go, we've got all the letters here. Look how pretty they are, nice floral. And how many pages in each of each one? We've got the buttons there. Oh, they flicked very fast, sorry about that. There we go. Look at those. Oh, look at these, these are gorgeous. So you've got 29 sheets in here. And then we've got the patterned lines there just gorgeous and I, I don't know this is really in fashion at the moment I mean I don't think this ever goes out of fashion but it's really really popular at the minute with weddings and stuff like that and the beautiful butterflies oh I love that with the, the writing on it be kind blissful dream I mean just gorgeous sentiments there so there we go right they are your craft down products you've only got 26 minutes so if you want to get those grab them right okay we'll have to go back to the folders now because i got lost in i got lost in the madness okay so we're gonna i'm gonna reverse it so it's in the right order so the first one that we have got is we've got the polka dot there can we see that oh sorry we've got the decorative lace there these are $15.96 or $15.80. Platinum members is £12.77 and $12.64. The next one we have got here is the Geometric Diamonds. Look at that, lovely. Going on to the next one, the Queen of Hearts. Look at that one. These are perfect to go in with the good, the good get deal. <laughs> the floral here. There we go, look at that, gorgeous. The floral butterflies, I love that one. That's just lovely. And then finally, we have got the polka dot hearts and we're gonna be demoing this with Jan. Right, now then, I love these little ones. They're cute. Uh, they're very cute and I just think there's lots of different ways to use them. I think last time I was here with these, I did the Queen of Hearts one and we made it into a, a triptych where we did three panels of it and made it into a much, much larger card, even though you've got those little dinky embossing folders. Now, I normally take mine out of the packaging and I've just got written on the back what the name is in case I need to reference it there. But these are just under uh, six inches, so about five and th uh, three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches there. So a really nice size and they were designed to fit in your Gemini Mini. So they will go nicely through here and I'll show you that when we come to do the embossing. So what again I've got, piece of stamping card, it comes in for all sorts of different things and we're actually going to sort of emboss it and then add some ink to it, some detail to it. So I'm just again, just cut it slightly smaller than the folder and on this particular one, again if you're not sure about which way around just check inside but on this particular one the coloured design on the front is technically the right way up so my cards white on both sides it doesn't really matter but if you'd got if you were embossing for example a piece of centura pearl you'd want the nice colored pearl side facing the colored side on the embossing folder there so we're literally just going to line that up in there 
and close that up and then I'm literally going to bring my mini in for this one and because it's an embossing folder in with your mini you get the lovely little purple shim now all you need for this is the shim to sit it on and that is the desired thickness for the mini to give sort of optimum pressure so I'm literally just going to sit it on it doesn't matter whether you put this on the top or underneath I just prefer to sit it on there like that offer it into the mouth of your machine and then literally pop this through and the mini even though it's a small machine it's still got that mighty pressure in there that you associate with Gemini so when we take that through we'll just unclick that one pop the shim to one side and then on here you can just see how that's actually given us that gorgeous detail and if I just tip this you can see that detail on there and I'm going to bring this out with some ink so that you can see it a bit better and again if I flip it over you've got that deboss side which looks equally as nice like I said earlier there's no right or wrong with this you can use that side that's pressed in I want the side that's raised because I'm going to add a little bit of ink and I'm going to go back to my pink tulip again but this time it's the opaque one and I've just brought a brush this time rather than the applicator because you get a slightly different finish uh, with the brush so again all I'm going to do is swipe this from one side to the other and what it does is sort of highlight the um, the embossing yeah so you can see there where we've got just that raised part and again literally side to side and it'll just catch that embossed area whereas I, f I personally find it harder with the applicators because like I said I'm a bit heavy-handed <laughs> and I end up getting ink in the background where I don't want it so just using the uh, the brush there I find that I can get for this particular technique I get a better result now I've done two different styles with this I've done what we've just done there and then the other piece that I've prepped at home I actually colored the background first so you can see they do look very different now this one was done on centura pearl so can you see how the shimmer goes all the That's way so through pretty it? That. and then i've brushed it with the ink just the same but i'd added some ink to it first this one is on stamping card so i wanted to show you the two different looks even though we've done the same thing to them you can get very different looks with these depending on how you treat your cardstock and what cardstock you actually use so i'm just going to bring in the sponge applicator and just again go around the edge here if you are just starting out do you need a million tools to do something like this are you, um, is it is it worth investing getting a little bundle of something to start yourself off well so you obviously can... you need a means of applying some pressure so the gemini yeah. range is huge now it goes right from the little mini that you've just seen me use we have the midi which is a hand cranked machine mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me then we've got several of the electronic machines going right up to the big gemini pro so there's something there for every budget now obviously the size of the machine dictates the size of the project you can work on yeah of and as a lot of you know i used to work in our store at Chesterfield and yeah. one of the questions I got asked most of all was which Gemini should I buy and my answer to that was always the biggest one your budget will allow because more often than not when people came in and bought the smaller one you'd see them two or three months later and they'd come and upgrade to the big one because they've got more space if you can manage the bigger ones you've got that space to use and you can do anything below it yeah. if you just invest in a smaller one you're restricted to the size you can work on but having said that I do appreciate that you know not all budgets will run to that larger one so again whatever happens to be within your budget but I think the mini is ideal I know there's so many people out there craft with their children and with with their grandchildren I can't wait while my little grandson's big enough to to do some crafting with he comes into my craft room and he's like "Ooh," Aww. because it's like <laughs> Aladdin's cave and bless him there's hardly anything in there that he can touch but he comes and sits on my knee and he's like this and this and this and I'm like yeah when he's big enough I says you can come and cut Aww. and stick with Nana honestly I can't wait but the <laughs> mini's perfect for the kiddies because there's no electronic parts in it so they're literally just winding something through so you can see there how we've got those two and I'm going to use these in conjunction with each other so we're going to have one behind that's got the pink ink on the base and we're going to use this one in the foreground so I just want to stick that one down again and we'll put it on with the tape pen 
just to let you know, people, the Get It Got It Good offer is we've only got 18 minutes, 41 seconds. So as you can see, the clock is counting down. So if you haven't yet, you can get it, you can get it. And then it's run out and then you can't get it. So get it. Oh, it's counting down. It's counting down. Right. So I've actually going to pop these. Now, first of all, I thought, right. We'll go with a card blank. And I just want to show you, I brought the bits because this is my thought process when I'm actually prepping at home and designing the, the, the demos. And I thought, right, we'll go with a card and we'll actually look at offsetting these. So I'm going to go sort of something along these lines. And then I wanted something to go across the middle. But then I changed my mind and thought it would be nice on a card. But then I sort of skipped over to put it onto a box instead. So I've gone with a similar size. Yeah. But I've just made it into a box rather than a card. And we're going to go with that same layout, sort of offsetting them. It's, it could be, this could be either a christening or bridal or Hindu. Yep. It's got that real feel to it, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And then I've just used some paper. I'm having a big thing at the moment. I've got a box full of scrap, well, I'm saying scraps of paper. Some of them are <laughs> quite decent in size. But you know when you take a page out of a 12 by 12 pad? You guys will know what I mean. And you cut it in half to use a piece on you, and then you've got the other bit left. And I've got them all in a box, and it's getting so full that they're getting <laughs> damaged. So I'm on a bit of a mission to use up some of the scraps. So this pink, pink paper is actually from one of the Crafters Companion pads. I think it may be from, I'm just looking at it. Um, yeah, I'm struggling again, because it wasn't with the pad. If any of you guys recognise it out there, it's got a gorgeous little white um, script text on it, and then it's got the pink plate, plain splats. I don't think it, Georgina's just saying to me, do you think it's one of the newer ones? But I don't think it is. I think, bearing in mind that those scraps have been in my box a while, I think it's possibly one of the older ones. So I'm thinking possibly back to something like... Um, it's not the Parisian one. It might be the vintage lace, something like that. But I don't know. If you guys recognise it, let me know. Let me know. So I'm going to put this on the top of the box, just as an extra layer there. And then I'm going to make the other two pieces into a topper before we actually stick them down. And I've got a piece of twine and a sentiment that I've made to actually create that little topper. So that's going to be my box at the ready just with those paper layers on. And I've just inked around the edge of these with my pink again, just to sort of bring those edges in. And then what I want to do with this is stick them together. So bearing in mind, we've got quite a bit of um, ink and what have you there. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna use some of the red line tape and put a piece along here to join them together first. So that's gonna be this, this tape's quite strong, isn't it, once you've stuck it it's on? It's extremely, it's, uh, yep. You're not getting it back off. I so. do tend to <laughs> overuse the red line tape, I must admit. At first, I always used it for sort of, kept it for things that needed that strength. But it's become a go-to, I must admit. Yeah. So I want these to be of a size that fit in here like so, with a little bit of a border. So we're going to go along those sorts of lines like that. And then what I've done is I stamped out... A sentiment I just thought for a present Aww. or a gift big hugs was lovely wasn't it yeah that's and we're sweet. actually going to pop this on here to break up that vertical sort of element and then I've got some twine attached to it that we're going to wrap around it so I think what I'll do is put that piece on flat as well because I've got some foam pads between the two um, die cuts there all right just uh, had a question on Facebook. Yeah. Um, what was the, what was the paintbrush that you used to do the gilding earlier? The over the top of the hearts. What was oh, this one. Yeah, the it's big brush. It's just a it's just a stencil brush. Right. Okay. I've got a set of them, and I just keep one for each colour. So you can get. We don't actually sell them, uh, but you can get them online if you just if you just look at stencil brushes. There's lots of different companies make them. Um, it's not something that we've actually got around to doing yet. So again, I'm going to pop that across there. And then what I wanted to do was bring some of this around on more than one piece like so. And then I'll use a bit of the tape. Oh, there we go. I thought I'd lost the end of it then. A little bit of that to secure 
that end piece down like so and then this one we're going to do the same around here I just wanted it to have some sort of layers towards it and then anchor that at the back and then this is going to be my topper to sit on here now so I think what we'll do is add some foam pads to that piece to disguise the uh, the twine behind it so we'll just pop one or two of those on there now then I don't know how long these have been in my bag so we could be wrestling <laughs> with them in a minute you never know one of your old favorites honestly we'll soon find out so I may as well use those last ones we'll put one in the middle there and we'll soon find out whether they oh we're okay we're okay she says oh do speak too soon there we go I am getting better at it I must admit I feel as if I need a certificate in removing <laughs> foam pads uh, a backings. qualification in it yes it's taken some practice and some mastering there I Craig have had it this. done in like two seconds flat bless him there we go and again this one's just going to go as my sort of topper and it's just again a different way of using the embossing folders I think sometimes we forget about using them for backgrounds and things like that and then I've just popped tape on the tabs for the box ready uh, just to fold those tabs in at an angle there just to create the lid and then I've made a box for the uh, the base for the bottom and I've done that using my scoreboard so that I know we've got those uh, slight difference in measurements to make the top fit on the bottom now the top of it's an inch deep but I've made the bottom deeper okay so I actually like them to fit together and you can oh, just see a so little sweet. bit of the box underneath so there we go just that's again so you know, something that started out at just under six by uh, three inches and you can still use it to make a decent sized project and add some detail there gorgeous okay. I love that and I love the string across it it's uh it always feels very summery. Right, we've got the craft countdown. As you can see on the clock, it is 11 minutes 27. That's all you've got left. I'm going to show you what's inside just in case you haven't, because once it's gone, it has gone. First, we have the lovely storage bag here. I was having a bit of a panic earlier. It was all the excitement, but the zip does work very well. <laughs> so we've got inside here where lots of storage for your picky tools. One of Craig's magic. I don't know what he uses on his stickers. You can stick those in there as well. Again, you can stick your dies in here. You can have the, the die pads, anything like that. And it's just, there we go. Lovely little bag there. Right, we've now got, we have got the boxes here and Again, we have got the buddy bag. I mean, look at that. That's an organized person's dream, isn't it? It's just, it's brilliant. You can see what's inside. It's also, it's really easy to clean and you can undo it. It's just, got it upside down there. It's just Velcro, that's all it is. Easy to get in and out of. And then you've got the drawers. So easy to see what you've got there. There we go. We've got the liquid inks next. Here we go. These are gorgeous, these. They're so, so strong. I love these. I'll just show you the sides of these as well. There you go. We've got the aged copper there. Antique bronze. The, the burnt copper. And the tarnished silver there. I mean, just gorgeous. And we've got the farmhouse wax seal kit here, which is just absolutely lovely. I love this. We've got the kingfisher and the flower, as you can see there. I mean, great for wedding invites, love letters. I mean, I don't know if people send love letters anymore, but if you do, put one of these on them. And then we have got the pad as well. Bloom with grace. Here we go. I'm going to flick through this for you. We've got the lovely letters. You see, lots of floral design in there we've got the smaller letters with the buttons there just so you can see the lowercase there we go and then we've got some more numbers there in a different slightly different style there and these they do all pop out really easy and love these little tags all very pretty oh there we go and the nice little pretty lines we've got the gift tags I mean how gorgeous are they personalized to anyone that's you know if you, if you know them really well and you go, oh, they'd love that style. Here we go. 
And these, I just love these sentiments. Uh, we've got the be kind, blissful, and dream. Just so pretty. And then we've got the swans there and the butterflies. Gorgeous. Right, we've only got eight and a half minutes to get those deals. So exciting. Okay, so I'm going to show you just to, uh, what was uh, Jan using earlier. So we've got the polka dot hearts there. And that was, as you could see, you can do loads of different options with the same embossing. And it goes through the mini as well, as you saw. This one, we've got the floral butterflies. Here we've got the Regency floral. The Queen of Hearts. And if you, if you are struggling to see here, just because the light's a little bit, you can see here, that's just where the, the pattern. The geometric diamonds. And then we've got the decorative lace there. Also, I'm going to show you this next embossing as well. And I'm very, very excited because these are just lovely. These are the best of British. So as you can see, we've got some beach huts here. And we've got a little uh, demonstration there below. You can see how you could do it. I mean, again, with the stamps, you can do the sky. And here, again, if you're struggling, you can just feel on the inside. But you can see, obviously, with the colours, what it looks like. And we have got... I mean, I might be a little bit biased, but I love London and I love this. I mean, this is just gorgeous. This has... I mean, it's just a real Mary Poppins, modern day Mary Poppins feel to it, doesn't it? It's um, got the modern day skyline there with the big bend, the wheel. I think that's the gherkin there and the shard. I mean, just call me the tour guide. Ah, and then this is the picket fence and we all love a picket fence. Just so homely or homey, homely, homely. I don't know. And then the postcard. And I actually spoke to my friend about this the other day about writing me a postcard because I think it is a bit of a lost art and she was going to Norway so I said write me a postcard no one does it anymore I want a stamp from Norway and here you go it's it's in an embossing folder so there you go so yes please keep coming in with your comments as well if you've got any questions about anything that you've seen send us a message on YouTube or Facebook I'm going to show you the Christmas embossing folders. These are the ones with delicate decorations and these are just glorious. Look at these. I mean, this, this one's very traditional. This is the delicate, delicate decorations and these come with the stencils. You see there? There we go. And this is the festive candle. This reminds me of being at school those are uh, drawings in books next we have got jingle bells jingle bells jingle oh let's move on because i can't sing christmas song because it's bad luck <laughs> over the rooftop that has a london feel to it as well look at those reindeer just so lovely precious poinsettias here and then the final one we've got the snowflake medley right jan this is going to be your next demo. It is. We're going to go to the uh, over the rooftops this time. So I've demoed this one before and I went very similar to the inspiration that's on the front of the folder. So today I want to give you a completely different take on it uh, because when you have a look at this one, you know, you think, yeah, that it looks great with the black silhouette for the, uh, the, sky, the house skyline and then the lights on in the windows. You've got Santa and his reindeer there across the moon. But as I say, I want to do some Something different with it today so in here you get the 3d embossing folder again like we've just talked about which is those deeper ones with that lovely sculpting inside and then you get two stencils that are made to match um, those stencils so you can see here where we've literally got the facility to ink over the Santa and the reindeer there and you've got all the little snowdrops in the background and then the second one gives you the opposite part of the stencil so we've got the opportunity to ink the moon there and then we've got all the lighting for the background of the houses so what I'm going to do is, is work my way through it and show you how I use these because I like to do a little bit of stenciling first before I put it through the embossing folder so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lighting for the 
houses in place first and I'm just going to use a little bit of stencil tape to actually mask out. I know you were talking about this earlier Ionica when you said if there were areas you didn't want to get ink in. So I'm literally just going to pop this across the top of the rooftops here so that I don't get it into that area where the moon is. Okay and then we're going to pop it in position well, it would help if you got it in position first, Jan. There we go. We'll pop it onto our card first. Decide whereabouts you want it on the card. And then I'm going to stick it down using the, the tape there. So I've got my stencil in position and I've masked that because I don't want to get ink going up into there. And then I'm going to use um, Just to let you silver. know, we've just got three minutes in left the on back. the path down. Ooh. Three minutes left. Three Ooh. minutes left. Is it it's ticking away? Yeah, it's Look, ticking away, it. three yeah. minutes. Two minutes, 55, my goodness. Right, so I'm going to bring in my little uh, paint daubers. Paint daubers? Ink daubers. And I'm going to get one out to use some of the silver metallic paint with, okay? So these are the Midas range that Spectrum Noir do, and just silver, all right? If we've got them in stock, they'll be on our website and again just to load up that uh, dauber and what i want to do is just push this through the areas where the windows now the reason i've gone for the little dauber is is because we're in such a small area here uh, i don't really want the largest uh, sort of surface area of the sponge applicators these little daubers are just nice for fitting into those areas and then when we get to the larger areas I'll revert back to the sponge applicator so again so to choose your tools depending on what the job is what you want them to do but the reason I like to do this bit first is because when you emboss this particular folder it indents the windows and it's I find it more difficult to get the ink into them then and I'm being honest you know some of you might have had a go at this and thought it's okay but I found it quite difficult to get the ink through the stencil and then into like the debossed area so I thought right well we'll try it the other way we'll try embossing it so we turned it around and embossed it but then you end up with the houses being debossed and so anyway cut a long story short this is how I tackled it so I'm going to do the ink in here first and then we're going to line all these little windows up with the embossing folder and run it through the Gemini to put the embossing in place and then we're going to use the stencils over the embossing to add the rest of the detail if that makes sense. So I'll walk you through it. <gasps> Jan, we've got oh. one minute on the countdown. Is that all? That's, one that's minute to go. Just gone like one that, minute to I go. I hope you all managed to take advantage. Get those craft down count deals. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all teeth. Get the deals on the craft countdown. It's because I'm so excited. There's only a minute. I mean, <laughs> it's less than a minute. Yes, oh, we're all mesmerised by the clock as if we've never seen a clock counting down before. <laughs> <laughs> Stood there watching it go. <sighs> So I'm just going to pull that stencil tape off there now and then when we lift this off here you can see that I've got all those sort of you can see the houses almost emerging pretty, there straight yeah. away. So I just want to give that a little bit of a clean. We're going to use 18. this again for the moon. So again because 15. all the inks are water based. Good 10 old. seconds, 9, oh, 8, oh, gosh, 7, six, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, it is Fanito. I'd love to know if people have taken advantage of it, Ionica. I think, think they oh. hope. Oh, well, yeah. People are loving it online. Let us know. Did you get any craft down? Craft. Ah, oh, do you know what? It's, it's the excitement. Count craft. Uh, <laughs> craft countdown deals. Do you know what? And the funny thing is, the ir ironic thing of this is, is two people have said online, I'm enjoying the session, Jan is so easy to listen to, and Ionica's new to me, but it's also calming to listen to. That, that countdown did not make me calm. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for a migraine day. Uh, migraine day. I think I just gave you a migraine, <laughs> since right. I don't like being still. Having such sweet company is grand. And then Alison said, I'm loving that Ionica is a calm presenter. Yes, I am. <laughs> 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 okay, oh, Jan, we'll take oh, it back to you. excitement, honestly, it's giving me a hot flush. <laughs> it was very busy, that wasn't it? 30 minutes, I'm like, yeah, let us know if you managed to get any of the deals. That was brilliant. 
Right, so let's bring back, back in the room again. Oh. Back in the room, back in the so room. So here we go, that's the little windows all inked in with the silver and it has got just that little bit of metallic shimmer to it. And then now I can see through my stencil. So first of all, we're getting it the right way, Jan. All right, so you need to make sure that the pattern's the same way as your stencil. And I'm gonna pop this underneath and you can see where the little windows line up with the actual stencil now. And I just found this much easier because that's now gonna push those windows in through right. the ink. So I'm literally gonna pop that inside and then, like I said before, with it being a 3D folder, just be mindful of those plates. So the clear plastic plate as a base, the magnetic shim to build up the depth, your folder with the cardstock, and then remember it just needs the plastic shim. If you try and put this through the Gemini with your extra clear plate on top, the Gemini's got the sensors in there, it will most likely stop and return the plates to you. And that's a definite signal that something's not quite right. So just check out that plate combination. And then we're gonna pass that through the Gemini, and then we're gonna bring our stencils back into play again when we've got the embossing in place. So we'll have a look at that one now. And this is now, oh, it's moved. It's moved, I've got offset windows. But you can just see there where we've got the detail. You can see the reindeer going across the sky with the moon. And it's just moved slightly in the machine there. I think that's because I went in sideways. So because I used the junior plates and went sideways, it's just moved the card a little bit. If I'd have gone in this way as normal, we would have been good. But I've got one that I prepared, so don't worry. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start and bring these stencils back into play. So the first thing I want to do is the moon. And again, I'm just going to look through the stencil. And first of all, I'm checking out this rooftop here, which is going to cover up the one underneath. And then I'm also going to make sure that I'm lined up with the little reindeer legs here at the, the back. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm literally going to tape it over the back and onto the cardstock because I just now want this to go through onto the moon. So again, I'm going to use a little bit of the stencil tape. We'll use the bit that we've just used here and mask out those windows this time so that we don't smudge into there. And I'm, ooh, okay, we'll not use that bit. Doesn't want to stick because it's got some ink on it. Just got a question for you. Deborah on YouTube is asking, do you know how the CC light printable paper is? Is it like a cardstock or more like light typing uh, it paper? It is lighter. I think it's about 160 GSM if I remember the principal card stock. It's slightly lighter. I would say similar to if you've used our Nina card stock. I think it's similar weight to that. So it's, it's more than paper but it's not as substantial as something like the stamping card or um, sort of like the craft card and the black card, that kind of thing. It's sort of in between. Obviously, it needs to be of a depth that a printer will accept. Uh, I can get Nina through my printer quite easily, but my printer at home won't take the stamping card. So it depends what kind of printer you've got as to what works. Right, so I'm going to use a couple of the... Um, neutral colours now from the inks and again stuck with the uh, opaque ones and I've got twilight grey and smoked pearl here and for the moon we're going to go with the twilight one so I'm just going to take that one off to use the lighter colour first and again load up that applicator and as I say I wanted to do something different so I'm just going to keep it quite neutral this time and again just be gentle and I'm bringing the ink in from the stencil into the moon first to get those edges covered. Try and avoid any of the window area and then you can build up as much ink. Bearing in mind that when you look at the moon it's often quite mottled, it's got those um, shapes and shadows on it so don't worry if you've got areas that look a little bit different to others, I think that makes it look quite realistic. And then I'm going to go a little bit darker at the bottom with that slightly darker ink there. So that's the smoked pearl. And just flick this up one side here from the bottom, just to give it a little bit of illusion of depth. And again, when you take this off, you can now see that it starts Ooh, to come to yeah. life. It really does. Looks 3D. Yeah. 
So we've done what we need to do with this particular stencil. So I'm going to take that one off. And again, these will all wash in either warm soapy water, with a wet cloth, with a baby wipe, anything like that. And then the last one that comes into play is going to allow us to ink those little reindeers. All right, and the sleigh. So again, I'm just looking through the stencil to make sure that I can see it's in the right place. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm just going to fold this down. I try and avoid the, uh, the little snowdrops there. Now, I've mentioned before that sometimes when you're embossing, it can stretch the card a little bit. So if you're having trouble lining it up, it might be that you can do it in two different parts. There's been occasions where I've started with the inking and then I've just had to nudge it slightly because it does stretch the card fractionally when you pop it through the, uh, the machines, especially with the embossing folders. So this time, I'm going to come right over the top of the Santa and the sleigh with that darker ink. And these are really nice, sort of, they're like a brown grey. Um, any of you that work with the marker pens will know what I mean about that because there is a, a, a range of them on brown grey. Uh, and it's like a warm grey tone. And I'm going to do all the snow and everything. I'm not too worried that snow should be white. I'm just going to go over all of those, all the way around. And these actually fall over the moon as well. So I'm just going to be careful to try and avoid those rooftops. Just got a question for you, Jan. Yep. Bernie says, please can Jan show us how to emboss with the stencil stencils also. The different sandwiches for 2D and 3D folders. I have embossed leather before, but I can't remember sandwich. Right, so two different parts there. Just yeah. read me that one again. The first one was about embossing the stencils. Yeah, yep. how to emboss with the stencils. Yep. And then... Also, the different sandwiches for 2D and 3D folders. I have embossed leather before, but can't remember sandwich. Okay, yep, no problem. So as far as the stencils are concerned, I can certainly show you, I'm just trying to think what I've got left. Um, I can show you the sandwich for the stencils. That's quite straightforward. Um, as far as embossing 2D and 3D, I can go through the plates. That's absolutely fine. So let me just show you where I've got to with this one. I'll clean those up in a second. And you can see how we've created ah, that sort I like of the detail snow not white. on there. Really, really nice. Now, the fit, the, when I got this far, I thought the rooftops don't really stand out that well. So what I did was just take out some of my glitter. And I don't know whether we can pick, you can see just there now. All around the top of the rooftops, I've just added a little ah. bit of glue and then tapped some nice white glitter as it lo looks as if the snow settled yeah. on those there. And then every so many of the snowdrops, I've just picked out and popped a little crystal gem just on the odd one or two of them, just to finish it off. So you can see there, I got a better positioning mm. with the, uh, the windows on that one. As I say, I think this is because I went in sideways with the um, embossing folder. So again, note to self, it will work better if you go through yeah. portrait style on there. So I'll pop this one together and then I will answer those questions if that's all right with our producer. How are we doing for time? Yep. Fabulous. So let's pop this one together again. So I'm going to make like a, a bridge card for this one. And I will remember to put my background layer in here. So again, I've just made a matten layer with some silver glitter card and then some silver. Oh, gosh, I nearly saw me then. Oh, that's a bit scary. <laughs> no, you look beautiful, Jan. Yeah. And that one's going to go in the back first. And then we're going to matten layer the, uh, the stencil piece on top. And then again, I'm going to talk you through my process because I started making this design and I got so far with it and then thought, no, actually, I don't like that. And I changed it part way through. So rather than just throw it away, I thought, right, I'll bring that with you. Because sometimes when you see that thought process, it, it does help with your, your crafting. So that's going to go in the back. And then this one's literally just going to stick on top of the matten layers there. And then we're going to make that what's referred to as a, a bridge card. So all I've done, I've taken 11 inches. So I've just chopped a fraction off our A4 size cardstock here. And it measures seven and a half inches in total uh, for the height. And again, that was sort of deduced from the size of the embossing folder to start with. And then what I've done is I've scored on each side at two inches and two and three quarter inches and then the same at this side and we're going to create that effect where you get the piece across the front here 
and I've written myself a note, look, because I'm forever forgetting to stick <laughs> things down. So when I started out, I've made a couple of um, pieces to go on the sides here, but I'm not going to stick those just yet. That's what the note was for, because I need to stick the bridge across the middle. Ah. So where I got to at home, I made my bridge like so, which is just some mats and layers of the uh, white stamping card with the silver mirror card. And the idea was is that this is going to stick under here and onto here. And I thought, I don't like it. It's covering up too much of my design that I'd just spent all that time working with. So this bit had to go in the scrap pile. Ah. All right. And Aww. we're going to replace it with some acetate, <gasps> Ooh. which we can now see through and still see the design. See Do you know, you did there. You, you, I love the sound. I've got, ah, oh, oh. going on in my ear back here. I love it. Love it. <laughs> so my little note was to stick the acetate down before I can want to trap this under the panels here. So I've done a little bit of prep. I've just got a scrap of the silver, which I've just popped on as a, an extra decoration on the acetate. And I've got a piece of ribbon on there. And then I've put some tape on the back of here. And we're actually going to stick this to the panels before we actually put those others on. So what I want to do, let's have a little look. So, Joan, can you emboss acetate? Yes, Ooh. absolutely. It looks lovely. It does. So this measures 11 inches in total. But when I take away the two three quarter inches, so my little panels inside here that fold up, I've taken away an inch and a half. So from the 11, that leaves me nine and a half inches, which is what I've measured this at. So this is going to stick from one side of here right along the bottom so we've got one on that side and then just to take the tape off the back of here and I sit planning these things my husband will be like what are you doing and I've got little notepad <laughs> sketching things out so just to my ideas love don't worry so that when we actually span that gap it's going to hold this in the desired shape ah. to give us that what we call that bridge look there OK, and then when we put these on, it's going to disguise all that. Apparently that's underneath. what singers do. They write down their lyrics when they think of a good lyric. Yeah. And then they make magic. So that's that's all you're doing is making magic. So again, I'm just going to go with the tape runner down those side pieces there. And again, these are scraps out of that old scrap box I was talking about. So I'm not quite sure where the spotty paper come from, but I know you've all got loads of scraps going on in, uh, in that stash. When you all admitted to me that you'd got way <laughs> too much paper pads, there's got to be some scraps going on there. So just delve in and uh, see what you've got in there. So that one's on that side and then the same on the other side and then we just need a sentiment I think to go on there and we're pretty much sorted. So that one's going to go on here. Oh and you've got the little diamante on it at the top. Yeah just a couple of little crystals. I do like yeah. my sort of gems and things. So just <laughs> again to pick up what I'd put inside yeah. and bring it all together there. So that's actually the card with the bridge inside there and then I thought just on the centre here I've got a little sentiment and again these don't come with a sentiment but just have a rummage through the stash and I just thought with it being all the houses and the rooftops from our home to yours was a perfect sentiment and I'm just going to pop that in the middle there on top of that acetate so it doesn't totally conceal what's underneath but you can see there we've got that and it will actually fold down flat all right so if you were making an envelope for this it would need to be about um 10 inches by seven and three quarters so i'd be looking at making something to fit that and it's not a standard size but either way if you go one way or the other it will fold down reasonably flat but when it's stood you've got that lovely bridge card there and again just keeping it nice and neutral instead of that inspiration as i say this was the packet one that had got the uh, the black houses and the blue sky it I looks just totally that, different just totally different totally with different. exactly the same products so let's have a think about those questions then so yes to our director adam we can uh, emboss acetate that works beautifully you will get that crinkling noise again when it goes through your gemini but don't worry it's just the nature of it being plasticky that's all it is and then we had a question about the plate combinations for the um 
2D and 3D 2D sandwiches, and 3D, yeah. didn't we? Yes. So for a 2D folder, which are the traditional folders, and a cut and emboss folder, which are the folders that have the dies uh, embedded in them, you need your two clear cutting plates together with your folder in between. So cardstock in the folder, inside, two clear cutting plates together, and that will house your 2D folders and your cut and emboss folders. But because the 3D folders are thicker, this combination is too much you would have you'd feel resistance in your machine if you tried to put this through the machine with one of these inside and we've always said don't force the plates if you're finding that there's some resistance something's wrong and the sensors should pick that up and if you do manage to get them in it should reverse them back out for you to give you a warning so we're going to take away that top clear plate and put that to one side and i like to put my it doesn't really matter whether your magnetic shim is underneath the folder or I've seen some people put the folder in and put these two on top. Doesn't really make any difference. We're just building up a depth that is the suitable depth to, for the machine to apply the correct pressure to get the design. Now I prefer to put my mat flat so that it's not bending it over the folder. And then I put my folder with the cardstock and then use this one as the top. So that was the normal uh, folders versus the 3D folders. And then as far as, was it leather the lady was asking about? Mm -hmm. There was another part to the question, I think, wasn't there? Yeah, it was um, 2D sandwiches and 3D folders. I've embossed leather before, but I can't remember the sandwich. Oh, I know what the other one bit. The other bit was embossing the stencils, wasn't oh, it? Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to grab, um, let me just quickly see if I can find my stencil from this morning. Excuse me while I just have a little rummage in my bag. I want the... Jan, you're uh, having a lot, a lot of love online. Uh, Joy says, oh, Jan, this looks great. Uh, Teresa says, beautiful card, Jan. Someone says, does that fit in an envelope? I'm assuming so. The one it that does. I've just made? Yeah. That's what I was saying. I would yeah. actually make an envelope or a yeah. gift box to put something like this in. And probably I would be making something like this to hand deliver to family or something like that. So I think when I'm designing cards, particularly to give to people, one of the first things I think about is how are you going to get it to someone? Yeah. Because if you are posting it, you're probably better off making something that's fairly flat. Whereas this sort of thing, you can get away with hand delivering to friends and family that you know you're actually going to see. And how so. cute to turn up with that on the door. <laughs> so as far as embossing stencils are concerned then that one should just fit inside there let me grab a piece of um the miri card will work well in there let's have a look we'll do a quick uh, demo for you because this the stencils are not particularly thick but you will still get an impression out of them so let's just have a look at a little bit of Miri card because that'll show it up nicely. So the key ingredient for embossing your stencil is your rubber embossing mat. So you want the little silicon mat that comes with your Gemini and that's the bit that gives you the result. So I'm going to pop it in the Junior. It works exactly the same if you're using the uh, larger machine. So if you're using the big machine, same plate combination. So I'm going to start off with a clear plate and I'm going to put my embossing plate on here like so. And then you're actually going to put your cardstock with your stencil. And the idea of this is because they play, this one is soft, it's going to allow the pressure to push, ah, push those stars it. up into that stencil. Now, it's only very, very uh, thin, the mylar here. So you're not going to get a massive impression, but it will work. And then, as always, when we're using our embossing mat, you never put the magnetic. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but the embossing mat and the magnetic shim never, ever work together. So leave that one out. And then on top of here, I'm just going to use my plastic shim as a shim to build up the depth, along with my top clear plate. And then when we pass this through the machine, that squidgy sort of silicony mat is going to push the cardstock. The pressure is going to push it up into that stencil. So you will get a slight impression. Now, the thicker the stencil, the better this works. But when I take this off here, you can see oh, wow. how we've got that stencil embossed, ah. all the stars. So we've got embossed on that side and we've got a very slight, it's not obvious on there because it's only thin. As I say, the thicker the fabric is in your stencil, um, the thicker the embossing will be. But you can see you've got a lovely impression there with them.
There you yeah. go, Bernie. So embossing mat underneath with your card. Mm. So if you just remember that the embossing mat's going to push the card through your stencil, it'll work every time. Okay, do kiss. So I hope that helped, Bernie. Right, we're just going to have a little bit of a recap of what you've seen on the show today. So we've got the embossing and we've got the stencils here. This one is the delicate decorations. We have got the festive candle. Again, you get these all included. Remember, I know I've said it before, but if you, if you ever get confused, you can feel it on the inside of which way round it goes. We've got the bells. Oh got that upside down no I've got that the right way around <laughs> jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way over the rooftop which you saw the demonstration earlier done by Jan and totally different totally different but still the same precious poinsettias and then we've got the snowflake medley right so we've got some cosmic shimmer glitter 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 kiss coming up um, you saw Jan using these earlier so this is the fire red seven pounds eleven dollars 49 the lavender there the light copper periwinkle love that name pink sapphire sahara gold golden sand blue teal antique rose and then we've got the antique green you can check out the website for more products So we are going to just show you a video about the US shipping. We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Welcome back, welcome back. I am here with the best of British collection. I'm just going to go through them and then I'm going to uh, speak with Jan just for a little demo on the mini before we go into a demonstration of this. First of all, we've got the beach huts, which are just absolutely gorgeous. They're just so summery, aren't they? And we've got the embossing pad there. And you can see the design on that one. The London skyline. We've got all the famous landmarks there. You've got the London Eye, you've got Big Ben, the Gherkin. I think that is the Shard and then you can just see the Tower of London and St Paul's as well yeah we've got the picket fence now and I mean just home in a picture isn't it the picket fence and then we've got the postcards which I think absolutely are my favorite Jan what have you got for us over there with the mini 
Right, I've got one demo left and I'm going to demo some of those products from the Best of British. But just before that, I just wanted to um, do a little demo with the Mini for anybody out there that hasn't actually seen it in, in action because it is a small machine, but it's got a mighty punch to it. And I'm going to do one of my favourite demos. I'm going to stick it down. It's got suction cups underneath here and they are mighty. Are we ready? I'm going to stick it down well and then I've got my glass mat on the table here and this will actually pick up the glass mat. That's how good the suction is on it. Wow. And that means that you've got the security of knowing that this is going to work really well without having to hold on to it and stop it wobbling really, really well. Now with that machine, you get your folder and somewhere along the line I had, there we go, the purple shim. So it's slightly different to the larger machines because you'll be used to having the clear plates and the magnetic shims, etc., for the larger machines. Both the Mini and the MIDI work with what I tend to... It's, it's like an embossing folder without the detail in. So it's like the plastic of an embossing folder, but it's plain inside. And this is all you need for the die-cutting element. So don't forget, all our machines are twin function. So you get the die-cutting element and the embossing element. So I've just grabbed one of my dies that I've got in my bag. I've just been having a rummage because most of what I've got with me is stencils today and I've just picked one of those little inverted nesting dies and popped it onto a piece of card and literally for die cutting all you have to do is fit that inside your folder now you can use all four surfaces to cut on so just like the housekeeping that we offer with the larger machines you can cut on any of the sides and we encourage you each time you use it to keep flipping it round and using all sides to get sort of longevity now these obviously are a consumable and you can buy replacements for these but once you've got your pack your mini and the shim should last you shouldn't need to replace those we do sell these separately if for any reason you did need another one and then literally all I'm going to do is offer that into the mouth at the back here and turn the handle and you can see one finger one thumb and whoops just move the mat there i'm just going to put one finger on top to stop it moving my glass mat and this is going to pass through there and you're going to get that precision die cutting just like we do with those larger machines and as i say the beauty about these if for any reason you're wanting to work with the children there's no electrical parts in these so you've not got to worry about fingers getting trapped or and stuff it's like fun that. for them to get involved isn't it to it get is. them to go yeah but when you look at go. this you know look how crisp that is just get rid of those little pieces out of there there's just a couple hiding there let me just pop those out for you it'll poke it all there all all precision cut but that's just through that little machine and it's got all that lace detail around there is all cut perfectly for you to be able to then use as an embellishment and then if you want to emboss i did a quick uh, demo with that earlier but just to show you that again I'm going to use that same little embossing folder that we had earlier because that's the one that I'd got in my bag. And again, the cardstock wants to uh, make sure that it fits inside there. And I'm just going to cut this quickly with my scissors there. And we're looking at five and three quarters by two and three quarters. So pop the cardstock inside. And again, I've gone with the mirror card so that you can see this nicely. And then if I put this through now, it will literally just pass straight through the machine. So you need to add some thickness for it to work. And that's where the shim comes in. So I'm just going to sit this on the shim. And it doesn't matter. I prefer to use it this way, but it doesn't matter if you put the shim on top. It's just basically adding enough depth to that combination that when we pop it through here this time, the machine's going to apply the pressure, squeeze that folder together, and then you're going to get that lovely embossed detail there on it again. I love this. So it's a gorgeous little machine. A lot of people think oh, it's because it's small and because it's a manual, it doesn't have as much oomph, but it really does. We've kept as much of the pressure inside there as what you're used to with those ordinary uh, electronic Gemini machines. So that's the Mini. And having said that, I'm going to continue to use that because I've got some of the smaller embossing folders now from that Best of British collection. So one of them needs the larger uh, surface because I've got the postcard 
put that one to one side. So this one's slightly bigger than the mini. That would need the midi upwards for this one. So we're going to use this one. And then I'm also going to use that gorgeous uh, London skyline, which is small enough to fit through the mini. So we'll do a little bit of both there. So I've got some cream cardstock. And I'm just going to, again, I've cut it to size. And I'm going to pop it in here. And literally, 2D folder. So we're back to that original setting. Let me just get rid of the embossing mat. <laughs> Mary said on YouTube, I bought the mini for its cuteness and now I use it for its convenience. <laughs> it is, and it's, it's really sweet. You know, if you're wanting to sort of, um, you know, if you pop into craft groups or if you've got your caravan and you want yeah. to take a bit crafty, it's ideal for anything like that. It's great. I use my mini a lot for cutting sentiments out because a lot of the oh, sentiments yeah. fit through the mini. And again, you can see how we've got that lovely impression there of the postcard. Now, just to bring it to life, by adding ink, you can go from a plain piece of card to something oh, that looks wow. quite realistic. And all I've done there is go around the edge of it with some ink. I've added a little bit of depth of colour to it. I've splashed a bit of water on it to make it look sort of a bit more used. And then I've stamped this one on from one of my stamp sets there. A little bit of um, uh, gilding wax just to highlight the postage stamp on the corner. But can you see how all of a sudden, it just, comes just to something life. that's plainly embossed, actually starts to look a bit more real so that's the postcard done and then we're also going to uh, do the skyline now i was looking for something the right color and i couldn't find the right color so what i've got here i don't know whether you guys will remember and i know some of you will have bought this when we launched the outline dies probably last year i think it was we we actually launched with it some um, metallic sticker sheets so I've got loads of these sat at the side of the desk and this was exactly the colour that I wanted. So I've literally used a piece of sticker sheet and stuck it onto some cream card and I'm then going to emboss that one. So this is going to go inside the skyline one and because this is the smaller folder, I can bring that mini back in. I can grab my shim and we can pass this one through the little mini there and that's going to squeeze that impression into that cardstock. And then I fussy cut around this because I wanted the actual skyline to show a bit more. Oh, so you can see there how we've got that, that gorgeous skyline <sighs> and that bronze there. Beautiful. And then just by taking my little scissors to it, I've just trimmed around the top of the skyline because I wanted that to show I a little that. bit more. So all we're going to do use the then, smallest scissors in the world to do that. I've just got my little snips. <laughs> little really? snips are perfect Gosh, for the job. Very yeah, good. Absolutely perfect. So again, I've gone into the stash and I found some backing card, and I think this was from <laughs> our nautical collection. Um, I wanted something that was to do with sort of travel. Uh, and I had a look through what I'd got, and this one's just got the map on it, which I thought was perfect for what we were doing here. So again, I've just matted and laid that on some cardstock for the background. And then I want to pop this one across here with the Jan, skyline. when did you last send a postcard? Pardon? When did you last send a postcard to someone? Do you know, I don't think I've been far enough to send a postcard, <laughs> okay. to be honest. The Three. furthest I've been is my camera, <laughs> which is only a bit further up than this. Uh, but I am a writer. Are I you? do keep a proper written diary. And I would much rather write a letter any day than send an email. I really would. Ah. Absolutely. I love writing. So, I bet you've got really neat handwriting as well, don't you? <laughs> Everybody says that, but I had to because I taught it. Oh. So if it wasn't very neat, it didn't do very well. And then I'm literally just going to wrap some, uh, some twine, I think, around there as well. Or shall I? Yes, I think. Yeah. yeah. I've done it again, Finish though. It I've stuck this down when I should have put oh, my, uh, Jan. my twine around it. We'll see how we get on. I'll see if I can lift oh, it up. Jan. I get so... I get giddy, honestly. I want to <laughs> stick everything down. It's just uh, the number of times I've forgotten to add the ribbon and the, uh, I have to write myself little notes. <laughs> right, and then this one's going to go, oh, I've put some tape on here ready. Look as well. Oh, it's all getting a bit much. Some of this has been prepped like over a week ago, so it's... Uh, um, Anne on Facebook says, I know that I've said it before, but I'm really amazed about the amount of things that fit through the mini. I use it a lot. Um, Aisha says, I think this will be my next machine purchase, the mini. Just for convenience, I want something small for flower cutting. Yeah. Perfect. 
<gasps> Make yeah. sure you get it before Sunday, Aisha. So that just one's saying. just going to go at an angle like so. And then I think because I've put oh, I this on this. with a tape pen. <gasps> yeah. Oh, you're braving it. Yes. We're, all, we're okay. We're good. Right, we're getting the twine. We need something to stick the twine down with. My brain's d dissolving it's, now. It's the I'm excitement from the countdown clock. <sighs> That's the first time I've said it right. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's just a crazy time. I mean, that half an hour killed us. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so warm, honestly. I'm melting here. My brain's <laughs> dissolving. Right, so what we're going to do is I've got a couple of bits of twine. I want to sort of cross them over. So we're going to do one like so. And I have actually got a bit of glue left there from the tape pen, so that will work like so. And then I want to do the other one, sort of like this, this here. So again, we'll go under the edge there and under the edge at that side. And then I will secure them on the back with my tape that I've got ready. Okay, just like so. And then we can reapply that double-sided tape and stick it back onto my card, honestly. honestly I say yeah. some of them were prepped a week or so ago because That's I've why. a lot of shows. Um, I will have, I'm here tomorrow. Uh, I've got them back again on Tuesday. So yeah, there's been a lot of prep going on. Right, so <laughs> here we go. That one's going on so. And then last of all, I have got a little sentiment it says adventure awaits. So we're gonna pop that one at the bottom there no further along and then i've just made one of the little wax seals ah um, my favorite that come with the kits and i'm just going to pop this one <laughs> on here okay i'm not brave enough to do a one of those on air you uh, should do they're just laughing at me now i like how it's already done but uh, <laughs> yeah the the, the 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 naked flame in the studio scares me <laughs> i must admit so <laughs> I think it's scared Adam the fire alarms as well. it scares him too. There's a lot of equipment in here to be using a naked flame. So yeah, I'd rather use it at home. And then if there's any trouble, uh, my husband can uh, get the fire extinguisher out. So yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to use that as an extra. It's got the little key on that one and pop that one. We'll pop that one there just to go on oh. as an extra. Looks like a little so again, penny. Last one there, just using those little... Um, and again, just that little bit of shimmer there. Just That's adds a gorgeous. bit of extra detail to it. So that one was the um, best of British. It was, yeah. and I'm just going to quickly recap on that just while you get ready, Jan, and then we're going to have a vote. Is that all right? Yeah. You're going to get it lined up for us. Um, I'm going to show you the quick collection. Um, these are six fifty-eight, eight dollars thirty-six, or if you are a platinum member, five pounds twenty-six, or six dollars sixty-nine. So that's the beach huts there. We've got the London skyline that Jan just demonstrated with. We have got the picket fence there. And then we've got the postcard, which I do think, I mean, is my favourite. Right, have we, um, have we got them lined up, Jan? Right, so top of the show then, we started off with those everyday uh, Christmas stencils with the background and that lovely foreground design. So we had the little Christmas tree, that was number one. Number two was the sideways easel using those 3D embossing folders there with that lovely gilding wax on. Number two. Number three, we used the little mini embossing folders and made the little box there, just using those as a topper. Number four was the Christmas stencil there that we made in the monochrome effect in the bridge card. Oh, and then number five was Best of British and we've got that lovely adventure awaits there oh. with a nice trip to London with the skyline there. So one, two, three, four or five today. So yes, get oh. voting. Get uh, you can do it on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. You can comment in below and see which is your favourite. Ah, uh, it's a hard one. Those last two, oh, I don't know, don't know. Right, I'm just going to show you what we were doing earlier on in the show. We've got the stencils here, and we've got the collection, and you're getting two for free in this bundle. So we've got the baubles and the stars there. And like we were showing earlier, you can do the ombre effects. You can do the kind of fading in the middle where you, you get that real nice spherical effect with the sponges, things like that. We've got the, the bells are ringing. Oh, that was, that was really bad singing. Take that back. Don't listen. We have got... I just want to make a song for every Christmas thing. We've got the Holly Sprigs. I don't know a Christmas song with that one. So you're all safe. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas... Yes, it's called Oh, Christmas tree, this one. 
perfect poinsettias. I've never heard a song with that in, so I won't. <laughs> And then we've got the splendid snowflakes. Right, we are going to do some finished samples with Jan, some inspiration for you. Right, I've just got some of those that you've been showing, uh, Ionica, just to give you some ideas of things. So again, nice little dinky one there. That's oh. the one that I used in the demo. But how different does it look? That's very traditional. In those traditional colours. And we've just made that one into an easel. We've got those lovely jingle bells there with the little bell embellishment. Um, the poinsettias are there and that's the only three I've got from that collection the other two I'd uh, picked up were a couple of different ones so just to give you a few bits of inspiration and then the one that I did there was using the Christmas tree with the contemporary design so Brilliant. lovely idea with that little topper uh, effect there I think I think we've had a winner already we've had a winner? yeah oh. what do you think Jan what do you think won I wouldn't like to guess, to be honest. No, I'm shall not I tell you? I'm choosing my own artwork. It is number four. One, the two, monochrome. Three, the, uh, the bridge one, this yeah. one. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think, it, I think it was the dark snow that did it, you know, Jan? The dark snow, the I dirty think it snow. Is. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, We're going to be back later at 7pm, 2pm East Coast and 11am West Coast. See you later.